Hello, hello everyone. I have a Wild Whisper layout to share with you today using one of the brand new collections that was just released July 13th. Um, there are five or six new collections over in the Wild Whisper shop, so be sure to head over there and take a look at all the new products. I'm going to be working with Pam Bray's watercolor paper pack. I have the 6x6 and the 12x12 paper packs, and then I'm going to use a lot of distress inks and lots of stamping. So I'm going to start with this cut file. This was a freebie cut file from Virginia Walker at Confessions of a Paper Addict and I thought it would work really well with the colors and with my photo. I just have to decide which way I want to orient things and I'm going to go ahead and orient them the cut file this way. I really thought of about doing something completely out of the box and going across the middle of my page but in the end I decided not to. So I'm taking a little bit of tape here and you can see I put the little bit of tape on to my mat and now I am kind of just picking off little bits of it so it's not super sticky and then I'm going to flip it over and put it on my paper and now I'm going in with lots of Distress Ink colors. So I have Dried Marigold, Spiced Marmalade, and Picked Raspberry. Um, I went through all of my colors and kind of tried to match it up with the patterns in the Pambray papers and I think I did a pretty good job. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fill in all of this. Now the reason I put my cut file down there is because I wanted to get the cut file placement just right and I wanted to work knowing where that cut file was going to be ultimately placed on my project. You'll see what I mean as I start to create this layout, as I start to build the layout. But I wanted that shadow, so I'm not using this cut file as a stencil. I'm going to use it exactly the way it is, but I wanted it to A, have the color on it that matched the color of the background paper, and I also want to make sure I don't lose the placement of it. So I'm just going to go through here. I'm going to use all three of these colors, blend them all together, add them, mix them till I'm really happy with the way they are um, blended, and then we're going to move on to the next step of this layout. And the next step in my process is just to flick a little bit of water onto my layout, just a little bit, and then pull it off and dab it up. And um, you can see now I have removed the cut file. It's off to the side. I want uh, both the cut file and this background to dry completely um, before I continue. And now I'm going to back all the flowers on the cut file. And I'm going to go ahead and be using these papers from the collection. So off camera, I've gone ahead and back to the cut file and I filled in some of the middles of the flowers with some stickles and with some um, sequins and it's drying off in the corner. And now I am working on the rest of this background. And now you can see why I wanted to know where that cut file is going to lay because by doing it this way and stamping over it, I'm stamping using all those different colors of Distress Ink and also the Vintage Photo Distress Ink. Um, I know where my cut file is going to land, so I can stamp in the middle where the flowers are, and then when I lay the cut file over, it'll look like I've created an entire background behind the cut file, and the leaves kind of peek through the open spaces. So I'm using lots and lots of stamp, uh, different stamp sets from Wild Whisper. Um, I'm using the Always and Forever stamp set, and I'm using the Floral stamp set. And I am just going and stamping anywhere I think there's an open spot, anywhere that I think something needs to be included or filled in. Excuse me. And when I'm ready, when I'm all done with that, I want to make a place for my photo to sit. So I've cut this white sheet of cardstock by four and a half, four and a half by six and a half. And this is going to provide a really nice framing for my photo. I'm going to go through and go in with the Vintage Photo Distress Oxide Ink. I'm going to create a nice inked up frame and I am also going to go down a little bit over here because I know I'm going to stamp tone on tone. This is a lot of tone on tone stamping. Um, I'm going to stamp tone on tone with the uh, brush letter stamps. So I'm just going to go through here. I'm going to get all of this stamping done, pull it off, and then I'm going to go ahead and map my photo with some more of the pattern paper that I used to back the cut files. These papers in the Pambray watercolor collection are gorgeous. 
um, and so I really wanted to showcase them. There aren't any embellishments that go with it, so you definitely have to get a little bit um, out of the box or artistic when you're doing um, your backgrounds or dig through your stash, but which is something I'll do in an upcoming up, upcoming Descending project. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and stamp my title using the brush letter stamp. So it's just my boy. And see, there's my picture. And you can see how it has that nice, it has a very small mat of the pattern paper, but which gives you a gap between the part that we inked <coughs> and the white cardstock. And I love that look. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of pop my photo, my cut file, up onto some pop dots now. And this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to put my my cut file aside because I decided to use, for the centers of some of the flowers, I added a little bit of Stickles glitter glue to them just for some added pop. And um, now I have the Stickles weren't completely dry yet. So I was impatient and I went ahead, I took all these little pop dots and I put them in the open spaces of the cut file. Remember when I said about stenciling the cut file? This is another reason I stenciled it, so that I know where the cut file is going to land and I know where I want it to be. So I can fill in all of those little pop dots, remove all of the little paper things, and then gently lay my cut file on top and it will sit exactly where I want it to sit on my page. I'm sure there's probably easier ways to go about doing this, but you know what? I knew I wanted both pieces inked. I know I wanted them to match, and so I just thought this made uh, the best sense in the way of doing it for me anyway. So I'm going to give everything a little bit of a push just to make sure it's nice and adhered there. And then um, some of these centers of the flowers have um, these sequins. These are brand new sequins from Speak Along Scraps. They're called Jewel of the Nile. And I'm just, I have some of them in the centers of some of the flowers, and now I'm just going to add a couple into two little clustered areas, and that's going to complete my layout. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you haven't, be sure to check out all the new releases over at Wild Whisper because they're gorgeous. And you can use my code, DT Sarah, to save 10% off your order. Here's some close ups of the layout. And you can see how beautiful that paper is and what a cool, um, kind of almost foiled look it gave to my layout. Really, really nice. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.